Dr. Chuck the Science Schmuck. Synchronize. Hello, everybody. Let me start today with a story. It's a stupid story. You don't have to listen. I recall having been a kid back in the day when shopping malls were a thing. I'm 41 years old, so uh, this would have been a while ago. Shopping malls were the thing. Like, as a kid, the shopping mall was amazing. You'd go in there's this giant indoor space. They decorated for the holidays. There were all these cool stores that you could go in. Uh, you could buy stuff, but as a kid, you don't have money, so you can't. There'd always be a pet store. And when I was really young, there was World of Science, which was my favorite store ever. You can buy little rock specimens and all sorts of science toys. They closed it down because, of course, nobody pays for that stuff. But one thing that I recall seeing that kind of left an impression on me was in the Sharper Image of all places. Sharper Image was a store that sold, it might still exist, all of these weird gadgets and novelties that you you'd, you'd use. My voice is not working because I don't have enough coffee. Anyway, Sharper Image sold gadgets. Weird little gifts and stuff. One thing that really stuck with me is one time I went in there, it was probably about 10 or 11, and they had these spheres made of glass, and inside them was an entire ecosystem. There was water and a little piece of, like, algae, plant material, some sand, and, like, some little shrimps. And I was like, what? How are they in there? Because you can create these ecospheres. Those don't really exist anymore because they're ridiculously hard to actually... Ew. Don't know what I just touched, but it was sticky. I don't want to know what I... That, that bit... So yeah, replicating something I thought I saw when I was 11 in Sharper Image. I'd like to build a relatively closed ecosystem, and now I know that's not entirely possible, but I'm going to try to get as close as I can with science. Especially science they didn't want to use because it was too smelly. So, how do we start? Uh, reclining, reclining, don't fall. What is this? Uh, some of you may have seen these, some of you may have not. This is kind of an esoteric thing to own. They're, um, these are available at Home Depot. You go to Home Depot, you go to the lighting section, where it's just a million lights, and you, you just stand there, bask in the glow of fluorescence. These will be like, there's like a million of them. What they are is polycarbonate transparent tubes. Uh, there's a fluorescent light directly over you, which is where I'm pointing. These things would go over a tube in like a workshop so that, uh, you know, you, you're being stupid and you throw a hammer up. I just hit myself in the microphone. That hurt. It didn't hurt. I don't have feeling in my microphone anymore, unfortunately. The doctors say it can't be cured. These would prevent damage to fluorescent lights. Uh, they are very useful because they are totally, well, largely totally transparent and really cheap. This is like a couple dollars. Uh, it comes in two sizes. This is the th thick version. It's about that big. Uh, if you make, if you bend your fingers in a circle, that's how big it is. There's also a tiny for the, th the skinny th one. Th you know what? Maybe there's too much coffee, but there's a skinnier version that's about this big. And that's um, that's for smaller fluorescent lights, but that will also work. I wanted this one because I thought it would be easier. Uh, firstly, how much water do you think can fit in this? That can be figured out with math. I don't know what that looks like. Probably got close to your eyes. Now, unfortunately, we can't figure it out with math because I'm not allowed to make any. But math should work fine. So, uh, the formula for the volume of a cylinder is the formula for the area of a circle times height. Um, that's just how dimensions and geometry work. So, the formula for a circle, I wrote it down because I wanted to make sure I got it right before I show you so I don't look stupid. I already look stupid. Real little. Pi r squared is the formula for the area of a circle times height, and then you get how much volume there is in this particular thing. This tube is about 46 and a half inches long. Yes, inches, because my tape measure doesn't have centimeters. And 1.5 inches wide, uh, so that's the diameter. That's the diameter. Okay. I thought that was the, uh, the radius. You're going to want to jump cut this. I've got to do the math again, because I look like an idiot. So, look for the big pause in the video, 
and jump cut right before I said look for the big pause in the video. Future self, quick, unjump cut me. Oh, wait, I'm back. Okay. Ugh. Trapped in a little bit of void for a second. Um, hopefully he didn't miss, or I'll be cut in half. Half of me will be existing in the past, and half of me be in the future. My tongue must have been the one that got caught in the back. I was going to say, my back half's in the future, and my front half... Why am I walking backward? Stupid joke. Anyway, uh, yeah, confused diameter and radius, that's how people get killed if you're a civil engineer. I'm totally not a civil engineer, for that very reason. So, uh, pi r squared times height. So, pi is 3.14159, blah, 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 blah. 3.14. You can just use 3 if you're a civil engineer. I'm joking, civil engineers. Don't, don't collapse a bridge under me. Try not to collapse a bridge under me. Uh, 0.75, that's the half of the diameter squared, uh, which comes out to 0.5625, and then times the height, which is 46.5. Math, 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 math. It comes out to 82.13 cubic inches. Nobody uses cubic inches for anything, unless you're a real weirdo. Who uses cubic inches? Nobody uses cubic inches. It's 0.36 gallons, so it's about a third of a gallon. A gallon is about how much coffee you need to drink to stay awake in the morning. I mean, I aim for about a gallon of coffee a day. Um, don't drink it all at once, you'll explode. So this holds about a third of a gallon. That's not very much. But it's enough for my purposes. Not enough for my porpoises. They're too big. So, uh, the first step with processing this, you need to wash it. Always separate your words that end in SH from your next word that starts with IT. Or YouTube will ban you. Like, they banned me. They didn't ban me. They don't know I exist. I'm a secret scientist. I'm not a scientist. I am a scientist. I have a PhD in schmuckery. So, uh, Home Depot, if you've ever been to Depot, it contains a, a magical substance called Depolith, which is uh, a made-up word for the sort of dust that permeates Home Depot. It's on everything. It, it's dirty. It's messy. I don't know where it comes from. Probably the concrete. There's a well, Most Home Depots have concrete outdoors now. Hopefully it doesn't rain out there. But... You want to wash it, that's why you see that there's water. Uh, it has nubs. You're not going to need those. Ooh, that made a cool sound. So, there you got that. Uh, also from Home Depot, make sure that's dry and sort of clean. Pipe fixtures, you're going to need two types. You're going to need a uh, nubby cappy thing, and you're going to need... A uh, nubby cappy thing that's hollow with a screw thing, and then screw nubby cappy thing so that you can screw the thing closed, and you have a cap so that you can stick those together. Now, uh, weird thing about pipes yes, PVC pipes will fit in these super well. This does not. There's a lot of space there. You can't just jam it in. Uh, as much as I'd like to jam it in, uh, I can't do that. So, how do we stop moving? Stop moving. 
We're going to need Kalk. Kalk. It's Ka. It's Kalk. That's how it's pronounced here. We've always pronounced it that way ever since the dawn of New England. It's Kalk. It's an aw. Like you walk. You don't walk. You sort of like stumble. Uh, usually these come with, you need to cut the nub off. Um, I think that's actually, there's a word for that. It's some sort of profession in Hebrew. Oh, the nub went flying. Hopefully that doesn't happen in Hebrew. So, uh, you're going to want, this is siliconized, um, so it should be waterproof once it dries, because that's why I'm making this video now. I'm actually making this simultaneously with the crucible, which is upstairs cooking right now. So, I don't know if those two videos will even be related. I'm jumping time like crazy. Uh, like a man who doesn't want to walk through his herb garden. So, uh, yeah, stick that in there and give it a squeeze. Yeah, future me, you're going to want to jump cut again. I'm having trouble getting my cock out. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Still, don't, don't, don't unjump cut me yet. I'm just talking to myself. Because this is really hard. You better not unjump cut me. You know what? I need to enlarge my cock hole. Okay, jump me back in. Jump me back in. Okay. Uh, I did the bottom one, and I figured out why it was so hard initially. Uh, my cock hole was way too small, because there's a hole in the end of your cock, and it was not big enough to allow the, uh, the white cock material to exit properly. So I was having to apply a tremendous amount of hand pressure uh, to get anything out of my cock's um, aperture. So therefore... Uh, Oh, hey, there's there's rope on my ceiling. That's a little ominous. Um, yes. So that is uh, the bottom. Now I have... <laughs> oh, man, I have to do it again. My hand is getting so tired from squeezing my cock. Uh, okay. Uh, editor, which is me. Jump cut your way to the future again, starting right about now.
Okay. Okay, jump cut me back in. Jump cut me back in. All right. I have now affixed both ends using the uh, waterproof caulk. Now it is a matter of waiting for it to dry. Uh, the next stage will require moisture, and a lot of it, and also probably a significant amount of very smelly gas, and potentially to a degree where it may um, poison me. But that happens a lot. I'm resistant at this point. Let me just set that down, and... Um, you will not have any sort of time difference between then and now, because I edit you all together into one continuous timeline. So hooray for you. You don't have to wait. I, however, will have to wait. Uh, okay, that's balanced. Hopefully that doesn't fall, or, or my caulk is going to go everywhere. It is important, uh, if you are paying attention, uh, safety protocols. Notice that the end of my caulk is all dirty. Always clean the end of your caulk, or else it will seal closed and you'll never get anything out of it again. I probably will have to continually enlarge the aperture. Ew, it's all sticky! <laughs> I got caulk juice all over myself. Put that cap back on. Don't know if I should, like, put it in the freezer? I don't play with caulk too much. Only when I really, really need to. It's, it's, it's kind of gross. So, uh, flash you forward in three, two, one.